iOS 16.2 is available now, so you can go ahead and update your iPhone and enjoy all the new features starting today. We'll be covering everything new in 16.2 in this video, so if you're ready, hit that like button. Let's go ahead and jump right in. The first new feature is an all new application called Freeform. Freeform is a collaboration app that lets multiple people work in what they call a freeform board. You can think of this as sort of an unlimited digital whiteboard for creative collaboration. You can sketch out an idea for a project, design a mood board, start brainstorming various ideas, and pretty much put anything you want into this space. Freeform lets you work with various media types such as links, images, text boxes, and shapes. I sort of think of Freeform as a notes application, but with no formatting restrictions. The bottom function bar gives you access to a few tools. We have sticky notes, a huge selection of shapes that you can choose from, a basic text box, the pen tool for marking stuff up, and also access to our entire photo library. You can also choose to collaborate in Freeform over a FaceTime call. So I really think Apple's goal with this application is to replace in-person whiteboard meetings with a digital alternative that can improve workflow when you're working remote. So let me know in the comments if you could see yourself using Freeform iOS 16.2 also introduces a new feature for Apple Music called Apple Music Sing. This is a karaoke-like feature that makes it way easier for the user to sing along to their favorite tracks. It does this in two ways. First is the lyrics can now fill in word by word instead of just the entire line at once. This makes it way easier to sing along at the right pace to the song. Only certain songs support this feature, so just keep in mind that not every single song in your library is going to support the word by word lyrics. The second thing it does is it gives you a slider on the right hand side that lets you adjust the vocal levels in the song. This is by far the most impressive part of this feature. This way you can just hear the instrumentals of the song and get a full karaoke experience. Because of the on-device processing it uses for this feature, Apple Music Sing is only available on devices with an A13 chip or newer, and it only works on the newest Apple TV. Next up in 16.2 is we have two new lock screen widgets. 16.2 now gives us access to a medications widget right on the lock screen. This can help you remember when to take your medications throughout the day. We also have a new sleep widget as well, which can show a graphical overview of your sleep for the last night. I really like how Apple is including more health related widgets and I'd love to see even more added in the future. 16.2 also brings some new animations into the music application. In the now playing screen, the play, pause, and skip buttons have a new animation when you interact with them. These animations were first introduced in control center media controls, and Apple has now brought them into the music app itself. I really like how the arrows of the skip button animate when changing songs. It really adds that attention to detail that you'd expect from iPhone. There's also an update for AirDrop in iOS 16.2. The AirDrop Preferences screen in Control Center now eliminates the Everyone option for receiving AirDrops. This makes AirDrop only available to everyone for 10 minutes. This means if you try to AirDrop something to someone who isn't in your contacts, their device will only be able to receive AirDrops for 10 minutes after the toggle is enabled. If you wait any longer, they'll have to re-enable the toggle. This feature was initially limited to just China, but now it's present on all iPhones for iOS 16.2. Also new in 16.2 is the TV app has now been updated to support live activities. After briefly testing it in the previous betas, the TV app can now display live activities from sporting events on the lock screen and also the dynamic island if you have a 14 Pro. There's also a new toggle in settings for more frequent updates with live activities. This means that your live activities are going to get data much faster, but Apple does warn that using this could eat more of your battery. iOS 16.2 also brings an update for the home application. If you go to your home settings and choose software update, you'll see a home upgrade is available. The home app now supports new underlying architecture, which includes the new open standard called Matter. This can make your home accessories way faster and more responsive. You'll only be able to upgrade your home if your Apple TVs and or HomePods are running software version 16.2. 
And speaking of software updates, we also have a new feature for software updates on iPhone called Rapid Security Response. This feature can allow your iPhone to have the latest security features without the hassle of installing an entirely new software update. Throughout the process of 16.2 beta, the beta testers had a few security response updates. And in my testing, the security response updates installed in under five minutes, whereas a full on software update usually takes between 10 and 15 minutes iOS 16.2 also brings 5G support to India. So if you live in one of the supported coverage areas in India and have an iPhone that supports 5G, you'll now see the 5G indication in your status bar on your iPhone. Some online reports said that this is just marketing and the actual speed of people's data hasn't changed. So if you live in India and now see 5G on your iPhone, let us know in the comments if you now have faster data on 16.2. This update also introduces something called advanced data protection for iCloud. This means that your end-to-end -end encrypted data cannot be accessed even in the event that Apple's servers get hacked. Apparently, this feature would prevent Apple from providing data from your iCloud backups to law enforcement. According to Apple, they have complied with hundreds of valid legal requests for data from the FBI in just the last year. And if the user decides to turn on this optional feature, Apple would not be able to share any of your encrypted data with law enforcement, even if they wanted to. 16.2 also brings some updates to the iPhone 14 Pro. The always on display can now be customized to hide your wallpaper and notifications. Before iOS 16.2, the always on display on iPhone 14 Pro was just a dim version of your lock screen. Many people didn't like the look of this and also reported bad battery life. Luckily, iOS 16.2 fixes this with toggles to turn off our wallpaper or notifications or both if we'd like to. Personally, I leave notifications on but turn the wallpaper off. I don't see the need to have of my wallpaper when my iPhone is turned off, plus it makes the time a lot easier to read without the wallpaper distracting you. So this is a really great change and I'm glad Apple is listening to their customers. So let me know in the comments how you plan to set up your always on display iOS 16.2 also brings a fix for the unreliable emergency SOS car crash feature. This feature is supported on iPhone 14 and 14 Pro, and before the update, it was randomly going off on people's phones, especially when on roller coasters. Apparently, this update brings a fix for that and puts a geofence around the amusement park locations so the iPhone knows a car crash isn't possible on a roller coaster. One final change I wanted to mention is the brightness levels on my iPhone 14 Pro. It feels like Apple has finally unlocked the peak outdoor brightness levels for the newest Pro iPhones because my screen gets way brighter now when I'm outside after updating to 16.2. The 14 Pro can apparently reach up to 2000 nits of brightness when exposed to direct sunlight and it seems like Apple has finally unlocked that capability on the display. After updating to iOS 16.2, I'm curious what your experience is so far. So let us know in the comments and also let me know your thoughts on the new Freeform application. After commenting, don't forget to like the video and also subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you next time.